Well, hi, Frankers. It's a very nice hot day, so we're going to stay inside where it's not so bad, hey? You know what else is fun to do on hot days? Well, scratch your ears is one. The other thing that's fun to do is nasty fiberglass work. So let's try some. This is a situation that occasionally comes up where you have to mate uh, dissimilar shapes here. You can see that that uh, fan and this here do not match uh, at all. Uh, this is a factory Citroën heater fan uh, turned upside down to run on the opposite side of the car and uh, the idea is to adapt that shape to that shape. This is a uh, fiberglass or at least a glass reinforced plastic so fiberglass should stick to this very well. So the idea here is to change the, to make a transitional shape and that way when these are installed we can uh, all they'll need is a thin rubber uh, gasket or a rubber band type of thing to join the two shapes together. So what we've got is some uh, this is not altogether dissimilar from the uh, from the uh, the old truck door technique where you just slather some uh, kitty hair onto some cardboard and uh, that's what the tuck tape is for, is filler will not stick to this at all so when it gets rubbery you can just crack it off that's the plan so we'll get started making the little uh, mold here no I got nothing so this is a very rough crude approximation of the profile that we need. It's going to come off the box and assume a round shape as it uh, approaches the uh, plenum. So we're going to do this one first and then we'll do a small piece on the side and then we'll crack it off of there and we'll try to finalize it uh, off the car. Okay, looks pretty crude but that's kind of the idea. <coughs> Excuse me, the uh, part that we're most concerned about is filling this huge gap here and transitioning from this arch to the flat surface so this is uh, not intended to be uh, perfect but just to get us something that we can work with right then when we take this off at least we have the rough shape and we can make it as pretty as we want or not um, as a matter of fact it's probably already kicking off it's so hot that the fiberglass is drying very quickly today or hardening rather so we should be able to with the tuck tape you can just and all this these holes and stuff that doesn't matter because once we have the shape we can uh, we can go over it again all right it's a little crude but it's in the neighborhood now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this while it's on here so that we uh, have a, a reference and then I'm going to have to fill this corner here because it doesn't fit very well. Uh, other than that, that's kind of the idea. So, there. Whew, it's pretty warm. So that comes off. I'm going to pop it off and we're going to grind it down and then I'm going to put it back on and do that one. And I may actually go so far as to split this so that the thing, if, if we leave it this way, it'll work fine. But if we ever have to replace this motor, you won't be able to get the two halves apart to do it. So I'm going to split this so that when you put it together, or that it's uh, that it can be disassembled to replace the motor. All right, I've got the shape very roughly carved in there, looking good so far. Now, in order to make it uh, able to be disassembled, I've cut a 16th inch groove in it that lines up with the uh, original mold line, and my saw or a grinder wheel has very luckily ended up where I wanted it so that uh, what we have to do now is lengthen the one side by the saw width and then uh, 
so that when we put this together for the final time there will be no gap. So I'm just going to uh, put a little fiberglass in there to, to uh, fill up the gap and the tape will stop it from gluing itself back together. And so as soon as the fiberglass kicks I'm going to disassemble. There's only four screws and uh, then we're going to finish the two halves separately, paint and or you know finish the bodywork and whatever and then paint it and it should look pretty close. Hopefully close enough that it doesn't jump out at you when you open the hood. There's the roughed in modification there and I don't know where the other side went. Oh I put it outside already. Okay. The old rattle can. Let's see how it goes. Pretty nice uh, pair of scissors. Put them on the nice background here. Can we even see it? There we go. Today on Old Tool Appreciation. Nice. It's a nice heavy duty pair of scissors. Yeah, they came in really the perfect time for this program. Yeah. A very kind donation from Agent 900. Okay, what are we up to? Let's have a quick looky. Oh. The base models did not get the leather up here, but when you put the leather in, you have to put some foam in here so that the uh, the leather part doesn't uh, sit kind of flat. So anyway, that's what we're doing. By we, I mean Stephen. Well, you did the other three. This is the finished. Uh... Oops, clank. See, I had to make a few little fences in there but overall oops, let's just see it go on there right that'll uh, that'll fit very nicely I'll put some what do you call that strip cock in there and uh, it's kicked off to the one side so we've moved this in as far as I can and just kind of flushed it up there and it just barely clears the hood opening uh, mechanism and mates up with the Jimco air conditioning plenum just fine and uh, pretty convincing once that gets driven a bit you'll never know that it's homemade we can take it apart here to replace the motor so yeah you know that actually for what did that take two hours Tidy repair for two hours, I'd say. Yeah. Somebody would rather go play. Right? Right. Best day ever. Oh yeah. Super for sure. exciting. For sure. What do we got? We've what's, got what's the challenge? The today? AC. Today's challenge is to somehow make this look like it belongs on this car. So this is the aftermarket air conditioning unit. It seems to be a look at how nice of a match that is for the rat. Yeah, it's almost perfect. Pretty close. Now the trouble is being a Citroen. This is a nightmare because there's a big tent that fits over here, none of which is going to work anymore. It has to be really tightly sealed because the air comes in there and it has to go through the rad. Mm -hmm. This is all yeah, going to no longer fit. And that'll be fun, as in it's not going to be very fun. Oh, here's your Rest of the AC. Yes. <laughs> here's my prototype. You got it? Yeah, I'm just going to demonstrate my sweet prototype there. Okay, Citroen air conditioning, day 500. How's that? Oh, look at that. That's oh, nice. we're going to try and kill two birds with one gonna, stone. Uh, here. solder all those together at once. There's the uh, evaporator box in situ. And that is nailed down now. That vent is working. And uh, that's where the radio would go. So we're either going to get one of those little thin radio looking things, like what do they call that? Those electronic radios that look like real old radios, uh, ashtray, and we've uh, installed our fan mock up here. And this is the lever for the little door. So we'll have to run that to the inside, some controls, and 
we used a Citroen hydraulic pump uh, mounting bracket here so that it matches the other Citroen bracketry. Matching bracketry is key. Hmm, always. Always, right? And so now, starting to run the lines, Ash uh, has wired in, no, installed a couple of accessory electric fans on the condenser. Yes. And now is ganging up some wiring here. What is that? Oh, that's going to a relay, which will be uh, triggered by the uh, air conditioning pump going on. So that, oh, that looks very nice. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, right on. So we made this guy yesterday to hang this. The tent is the next big uh, construction job. So I'm going to get started on that. Okay, nice Ash, that looks wicked way better. Well, it's not wicked, but it's fine. Okay, it's, it's fine. not gonna park. It's not, it's not coming. Okay, Dean, do you, want more, do you want more solder? Do I? Do you want me to have more solder? Yeah, a little bit. Don't you think? Just some, yeah, I do oh, actually. Oh yeah, lots is good, more is better. But I will do it. Oh, oh shit. it's okay. No. no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, hold on. Yeah, we fucked it all we up. Fucked it all up now. Damn it! See, we, we shouldn't add more solder, right? Greedy. No. no, we can. We're good. I think somebody got an idea of twisting them together first. Mm, yeah. That's what I usually do. Who was that? Who was that guy? Mm, I mean, I'm not gonna point any fingers. Just a thumb. Can you go? Over? I'm gonna get you guys to come in here and do this one while you're at it, but maybe I'll just fucking twist them back. <laughs> Dean, I think we did it. You think so? Yeah. Hi, Frankers. Just uh. Hello. Hi, Dean. Hello. Look how effortless that was. Just video that one. Oh, don't worry, we did, we did. No, just that one. Hi. <laughs> oh no, we got this one too. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All right, so what's going on here, guys? Looks like Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Pretty close. Lots of stuff. Yeah, we figured some stuff out, actually. Uh, right. This is our first, uh, just, a, just a test of the electrical on the AC. So uh, we've rigged in Two electric fans to assist in uh, keeping the uh, operation going. Uh, so those should kick on when the AC is on, but only when the AC AC should only kick on if this fan is on. Right. So the first thing to do would be to see if it kicks on. You're live. Okay. We got key power. We got nothing. Right. Then we go to fan. Should see the clutch and the electric fans. And the electric fans. Okay, nice. Right. right? Check out how much air it moves in. Oh, that's nice, man. Yeah, right? Especially on a hot summer day. It's a window for no hair. This is great. Yeah, all okay. well, that worked. Well, just finish it up, like, make all this look nice. And so stuff it in the back of the dash somewhere, Just right? Shook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zip so tie. Nice. Frankers and I are heading to my friend Mark's house, and maybe we'll take a couple of cars for a drive. We've seen some of his cars before, so I think we should uh, see if we can fire fire him up and go for a rip. Well, this should be. Uh... A treat, 1933 Pontiac. This is a straight eight car. Uh, it's a smallish straight eight, uh, but uh, a lovely car bought from a museum that was closing. And uh, I think something that we should probably go around the block. Hey, Mini Frankers, do you want to go for a ride in this one? This is kind of your kind of car, hey?
What do you think, Mini Frankers? Pretty nice machine, eh? Oh, I gotta have the window down for signals. Oh, brakes are really good. We've uh, we've not driven this car before on this channel. So unsynchronized sliding gearbox. So double clutching, as in. See? Oh, so it's Just really let easy. Let the clutch then. out in neutral and match the revs a bit. Yeah. Right. Same with Model A. Hmm. Well, I haven't driven that either. Okay. Yeah. Very similar. Uh, look at all the gauges are happy. The car's too nice. It's too shiny. Yeah. Right. So let's see if an expert could. Oh, I got her down. Nice. Can't have Frank freaking out, so I have to end with his dog in the grass. Mark, what is this machine? R15? Okay. This is a mid to late 60s Suzuki ADCC Hillbilly, it's called, and it has a two speed sprocket in the back, and it was kind of a street trail off road machine, and uh, We've got a local Suzuki enthusiast, my brother, here to fire it up. Let's I'm, see if she'll I'm, go. It's interesting to me, more than anything, where where's the chain slack come from? Like the, I, I don't know. Maybe you have to have a different you chain. Have a second chain, or would you have a giant tensioner? But the giant tensioner. No, would the be tensioner right would be there. Yeah. It's so. not there. Yeah, and there's no slack in it. No, I think I you'd have to have a separate chain. It's got a cool choke on the handlebar here, though. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And we got a dead battery, so who knows what yeah, this is. Yeah, battery's gonna... dead, so we're just going to give her a shove here and see what happens. Oh, a little more compression than you thought. Holy shit! Has he got it going already? Oh, well, guess he's gone. <laughs> It's all down, yeah. yeah. I think it's more. I'll go check it out. Awesome. That's great. It's like the only one you don't have. Yeah. It's oh. the extra small displacement. That's cool. I better take it for a rip. It's so quiet. The agent. Boss is taking it for a rip. Cold War era bike. Go on the grass. See you guys later. Take it for a rib steam. <laughs> it's a hoot. Thing runs perfect, Mark. Just perfect. Yeah, but all these batteries. Well, not even that, just to charge you. Oh, that's a lot. Of 
But you know, they tried to make it so that if you weren't really an engine person, you didn't, you don't see the carburetor, you don't need to see any of that magic. It's yeah, all no magic. magic. Just and look at that chrome header on it too. Yeah, that's and chrome awesome. fenders. Yeah, and uh, the brakes are decent. There, stop it. Too adventurous. Yeah, that is really fun. Were you out chasing me? Were you chasing me? So today we've got our hands on. Uh, my friend Mark has a 1992 Acura NSX that he bought to uh, go with his new one. And so uh, we're just going to go around the block just for a laugh because I've never driven one. And they're uh, supposed to be a pretty, pretty good car and a pretty important car for Honda back in the day, or Acura rather, but Honda's pretty Same difference. Brand. Yeah. And uh, you can see there's another one right there. The yeah. Little, little newer yeah. model. Just there. a quick pan. <laughs> there. So uh, I drove that one uh, uh, last year. And uh, the, the new one, I mean, they're impressive, but it's, it's a little much for somebody like me. So. <laughs> See if this is a little more my speed. <laughs> Probably not, right? <laughs> Still a pretty high zoot car for me. Yeah, where's the column shift? Yeah, right. Where's the where's the choke? I do. I personally, I like oh, this the, one has signal lights. I like the big uh, the big uh, stocks on it. That's a it dates it, but I like them. What the it's, the big stocks oh, yeah. like that? She's warmed up a bit. Let's see if it has any poop. This was, oh, it really pulls as you get going. That's cool. Uh, you know more about the engine than this than I do. Uh, don't know enough to really speculate even. This was a later I know it's model, a, so it's a V6. It's a V6, yeah. Were they all V6s? I thought they were all V6s. Okay, yeah. I think it's a three point something. I know yeah, it's not. Say it's three-ish liter V6. Yeah. And, uh, you can tell we're a little we're in a little over our heads. A little here. over our heads in this type of thing. Yeah. Look, I don't have to roll the window down to signal. This thing's crazy. Yeah. It's the, the modern uh, modern luxuries. I guess the steering would be considered very quick if you didn't have an SM. There's a dead spot in the center of the steering. I'm assuming that that is not. I think that's intentional. Really? It's almost like it's got a damper. Hmm. Anyhow, I don't know anything about modern cars. I guess this isn't even a modern car. It's a 30-year-old car. Yeah. But it only has 40,000 kilometers on it, so it still feels new. The glass is perfect. It's all original paint. It's, uh, despite appearances, those are actually the original wheels. <laughs> I wonder what the GCFCE fellas will think of this. Hey, gentlemen. <laughs> What's going on? Holy fuck, this thing's cool, hey? Yeah, it's like brand new. Mark bought it at the whatchamacallit auction this year. Oh, With the, uh, um... Russo. Uh, Russo and Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the only serious snag we've run into is that the shroud intake duct thing does not clear the fans on its way in. So that will have to be modified, but that's not altogether unexpected. The next will be cut the hoses and assemble final configuration. And once everything's dry fit completely and fitted and working, then it'll all get blown apart one final time. And Dean is yeah. hard at the uh, Conti Mark V wheels. Yeah. Those are really actually cleaning up. They are, yeah, absolutely. I mean, started but yeah. yeah yeah and that's a factory aluminum aluminium do you say aluminum? yeah aluminum uh, or do you say aluminium yeah <laughs> I think aluminum uh, I think so too. yeah I think Ford made these for a while though these 50 like sure 70s. probably from like the mid 70s till the mid 80s yeah late, late 80s even yeah they're popular yeah <laughs> they're uh, but yeah, and then depending on the model, they would paint behind the spokes different colors. Yeah. In like, the case of your machine, yeah, gold, gold, yeah, pure gold. 
It's uh, I mean, I actually opened it up the other night and it actually yeah. went pretty good for a 460. It was a smaller from 78, yeah, you know, but still faster than the Saturn. Oh, god, yeah, oh, yeah, way faster. <laughs> what a pile, what am I doing? Oh, god, we'll rejoin <laughs> the Dean's rim restoration. Sure, I'm trying to make it better anyway. It's looking way better, it's looking really nice, yeah. Once I this and I just started. So. I wasn't expecting them to clean up that much, honestly. They really look decent, it. yeah. If you find any chunks, we can use a light file and a little bit of sandpaper. Oh, they were, they were pretty chunk free by the looks <clears> of it. They looked yeah. like they hadn't been curbed. Hundred and thirteen thousand K, I think, on that car. Not too curvy. Not too curvy. But you're right. Yeah, that's a nice thing about aluminum. Hey, you can. Yeah, you can buff <laughs> out any scratches or gouges as long as they're not completely halved. Uh, do you have the caps? Do you have the centers? I do have centers, and I ordered one from Saskatchewan as well. Uh, pretty glamorous, eh? The whole car thing? Yeah. Pretty glamorous. So happy. Just get to kneel on the cement. Yeah. With your Scotch Brite pad. That's good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna be done. This is the stuff that people don't realize. This is 80% of restoring your car. It's just the most miserable garbage tasks. In the spokes and right, just perfect. like if you can't like zone out and do that stuff, no, then no. you should pick a different hobby, right? Because most of it is tedious. Speaking of tedious, let's have a look at the upholstery job. Oh, yeah. Speaking of zoned, <laughs> getting the upholstery zone. Oh, what have we got here? The folding armrest for the back seats. Yeah. Wait, let's have a quick review of the finished piece. Wow, that is really nice, man. That looks terrific. Dean, check out the size of this cow. Oh, oh yeah, isn't that it's great? It's a huge brown cow. Yeah. How yeah. now? Yeah, that's what it's Look at that. Hey, like if I was a cow, I would I have to be pretty us. big. Don't even want one here. Top marks from us on the on the work on the upholstery kit. Great work. Uh, we are trying to do it justice. Uh, yeah, we are not really professional good. trimmers, so no. we are doing the best we can with a very nice piece of equipment here. Well, that armrest yeah. is in good shape. Yeah. Is that from my car? Yep. It's in excellent, excellent condition. It's just not brown leather. Dun dun dun. Yeah. So we're gonna have a well, first. Okay, let's have a first this. light toss. A lot of the rear seat, uh, actually, a lot, all of the seats we are using from my 1971 project car because the uh, kits and foam are not available for 1960. What? Nine and old, 68 and older, yeah. and this car is a 68. So we had no choice yeah. but to buy this kit, and I remember talking about that now. Yeah, and there's only front seat though, so we're salvaging your entire, so this is your entire rear seat. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That would sure look nice in my car. Of course, this car is a lot closer to finish, and therefore gets the nice seat. There it is, waiting for its seats. Cars getting waiting to get finished everywhere. They're everywhere you place. turn. Dean, is your car finished yet? Which okay. one? Uh, pick one. <laughs> no car. <laughs> I just keep buying more and more junk. Oh, what? let's have a look at the roof. Well, there, it's a big white piece of fiberglass. Turned out really surprisingly well for something that is uh, what 50 plus year old fiberglass with one coat of primer and hope for the best. Come on, focus you piece of crap. There we go. Yeah, reasonably happy with that. Okay, how's this going? Oh, he's... I'm trying to replicate the way it came off. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Look at how easy that is. <laughs> it looks like you're putting on one of them Russian hats. <laughs> this has kind of been a learn as I go process. Teach yourself as you go. Right. You could say. <laughs> well, we don't. We don't have time. We gotta figure it out, right? That is. Uh, is it going? Look at what a nice piece. I'm more impressed by the foam. That is old, and it's just perfectly good. Like, there's not, not a speck of old foam came off. Nope, not on this piece. Not on this whole thing, yeah. The Isn't that weird the, that the, the... The upper is, was rotten, though. Yeah, like, this piece, the original foam was mint, and the piece that goes right here, the original foam, completely garbage. And this piece, which goes in between that piece, part of the upright, foam perfectly good. 
So there's a different foam in that backing. That stuff with the holes in it, maybe? That egg crate kind of stuff? Yeah. All right. A couple of minutes later, and bingo. Look at how nice the seam sits. Yeah, I think we got that edge real nice. Right. Yeah, that is nice. So this, yes, that sits, sits like, that, like that in the seat and then folds down for your enjoyment. Yeah, and a then lovely this piece. Guy, and I that, believe, when it folds down, I believe that guy will and, go there. And, yeah. yeah. So it'll hide all the mechanism yeah. and everything. And then this actually wraps up around the seat frame. Okay. Yeah. So this, I think, will actually fold up and pretty much tuck almost right underneath this, I think. Yeah. Good morning, Frank and Franks. What a lovely day. What do you think? Should we get this thing done? Okay. Uh, one of the jobs I've not been particularly looking forward to has been uh, fitting the, what we've started calling the tent. What's happened is as we've uh, added the extra uh, radiator and the fans is that the <coughs> the original tent structure here the geometry has changed as it's now an inch and a half closer and a, well, it's not really any higher but uh, between the this and we also had to make it uh, this is the frame for the tent and I've extended it about an inch and a quarter to clear the fans and we've moved it out this way because of the extra condenser there. So the original tent structure just won't fit anymore. And uh, this is the air intake from outside. So I've positioned it where it will be when the fenders are bolted on. I'm a little bit lost here because this bolts hard to the fenders and supports the spare tire on those pads there. In uh, typical Citroen style, there's just no room to spare. There's no real, uh, I mean, there's just not a lot of tolerance for this type of thing built into the car. So we have to essentially chase all the modifications to the tent. I had to shorten the air intake to clear the fans, otherwise we couldn't install it. And then I will have to notch a hole in the shield here to clear the wiring. But overall, could be worse. Once the tent is finished, it will clear the fans, but only just barely, but that's what we're gonna have to do. So what I've done here is made a half-ass paper pattern. And we're gonna compare that to the original tent, which I've deconstructed here. This thing, you wouldn't think that would be a big deal. It probably took well, I don't know, it took over an hour just to get that off of the frame. It's actually held on with brass rivets every couple of inches and staples every inch or so. A pretty confounding thing to, uh, to work on. Nevertheless, just to uh, compare, what we've ended up with is something along these lines, which is uh, quite different in the profile from the side. Uh, I've got a black grain vinyl here. It's not identical, but I think the Citroen Restoration Society will forgive me if they're forgiving the rest of this. More bracketry. Hmm. Oh, it's a little undercut there. Let's see how she goes. There. Nice. And we've got another one. One for the here. There. So that the thing will still seal. All right. We're uh, moving along on the. Citroen uh, radiator shroud tent thing 
and originally it was riveted and stapled. So I'm trying to recreate that. And uh, <clears throat> a, uh, a handy, a handy trick for making these staples. Uh, we're going to uh, just take your piece of first from the smallest drill bit you can through the holes to clean them up and and punch through the vinyl. And then take a pair of pliers and just give it a little of this. And uh, bend them over each other. Right? Don't matter really if it's tight at this point. And take your uh, uh, farrier's snips here. back to the other pliers and one from the other wing now obviously it's mild steel it's very soft but it does work hard enough when you crimp it over that it's a pretty passable staple and sometimes just saving the trip to the store is, is the most important part this is actually very handy on uh, American cars of the uh, post-war. They all have this type of arrangement uh, um, holding the, uh, the mud flaps around the uh, top of the control arm and it's very often missing but this is uh, an easy way to recreate those and just use the original holes. Staple them back in. Looks good and looks a lot more authentic than paw rivets and uh, and you don't have those weird holes in your fender well or wherever. The handy tip of the day, it's not very handy. The cross member. Oh, look it. No there, and... Look, that's it. Fits perfect. Nice, so those are in. So that's where it's going to finish up. And that is, uh, it's all sealed. Fans are very tight to everything. It's all very, it's all very, very tight. Not a lot of room. Uh, gonna be tight with the spare. We just, uh, we're just gonna have to work around it. Might have to shim the spare out. Just a tiny bit. Maybe put a cool hood scoop. That's enough for today, holy cow. It's a lot of, a lot of screwing around with fussy bullshit. There's all of our staples. See, that's why I did all the staples. Because that one you see, mm -hmm. that'll just all get painted. That's the original thing. The original tent-like structure. And the scoop still fitting at the original angle and lining up with that. <clears throat> that, was a, that was a day's work for that inch for that inch at the air conditioning and to fit those fans to retain the tent citro tent <clears throat> you have to tell mark it's authentic bombardier skidoo seat cover material made in quebec those are some of the best headlights ever put on a car Right, and you get the little thing. Look at that all matching Marshall. Oh, they're so nice. I wish this was mine. My car is poo poo. Straight on shot. Look at how nice that is. Oh, all I'm getting is glare. It's too clean. That doesn't happen often here. We're missing the clip that covers the join. So we'll have to work on that. I will put that on the list. The original from 1967 or eight. Anyhow, so cool. I'm really happy with the gray primer tone on the inside of that original to the car and like 
they're tempered so you don't find cracked ones, they just explode. But these are not bad. But that's the thing, you gotta this is like a pretty high spec car. So you gotta, you know, that's why it's getting this is you know, we talked about when you do one of these cars, like are you gonna do one? This is the year, this is the model, these are the options. It's just a long thing. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the sheer number of hours to make it all like something that you can turn on and it's going to work every time. Yeah, there's some sweet bracketry and uh, I think in terms of not looking like a street rod, yeah, uh, mission accomplished. Yeah. Other than I wish we had time to tone that down. Mm -hmm. We'll paint this this and put that. The last two bolts to fasten that on there and then I think we'll just paint all the fasteners black we still have to rivet or staple this to this yet so this has to be folded over it should be sewn I don't even you know that has to be folded and then the staples oh no it doesn't have to be sewn because there's a piece of metal that goes on top of it oh, okay. that you staple down so there's still several hours work in putting that together yep i look at your face i know you're already having fun no it's the thing is it's working it's working like we haven't hit any we haven't made any like oh it, too bad that's not gonna happen now like it's really oh, no. gone exactly the way that we figured oh what's okay. that man what's that not Uh, yeah, so got a surprise coming for you. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. There's a lot going on. Your dog's going off and craziness is going on. But I got this car that was uh, kind of saved from the crusher here. It's uh, it's coming. It's coming to me right now. Um, you're gonna see it in a second here. It's pretty cool. I actually have another car that's parts for this. So I'll probably end up selling them. Check this out. Cool. 59 Chevy. Oh yeah, that's sweet. A little bit hit in the back there. But you know what? Whatever. He's going to load it and we'll have a look. See you in a bit. A uh, quick review of the Chev. It's a 59 Chevrolet Bel Air four door flat top. I mean, it's rough, right? But it's cool, of course. Um, look at the pinky color. She was hit in the rear pretty bad. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, but still, nevertheless, kind of a neat car. I wonder if the trunk opened. No, oh, maybe not. You can see the damage here. I think it's just bonked. Pretty bad. You know. Yeah. Seen better days. Bumper's wrapped right around there, if you can see. Holy! Huh. But, still, nevertheless, Really cool car. Has its dash all intact. Ooh, cool. Steering wheel, automatic transmission. You'll see the engine and tranny in a sec. Floor panels are somewhat on there. Headliner's just a fallen down. Yeah, guy brought it down from up north, Grand Prairie area. Let's get this hood open. Gently, gently. Okay, so there you have it. Let's get the old stove bolt six. It's pretty complete. Yeah. Coil wires off, but I mean, the, yeah, the, the starter's in there. Distributor. It's an automatic transmission. This will be a power glide. All the yellow Alberta plates. 
Wow, that's cool. Oh, there it is. Oh, actually, it has oil in it. The guy said it wasn't seized. So, I think he tried turning it over. But he didn't care about it. He wanted it gone. Bel Air. I think Canada had a lot more of these. Not let me in. Maybe it's locked. National Park sticker. You can see that. Oh, I found the zoom. Cool. There we go. Cool. Too bad the front window's got cracks all over it. Yeah. Still cool, still happy. Weird, pink with a blue interior. Wow. Oh, that door opens. Oh, it's a pretty floor delete package though. Rubber floor mats and... Oh yeah, nobody's home there. Ugh. Yeah. Ton of grossness in the uh, glove compartment here. But there it is. Bingo, the old original manual, manual for it. 59 Chevy protection policy. So that's cool that he kept that. I'm happy to see that. Right on. Ashtrays all there. Ah, you know what? It's, these things are sweet cars. Needs a clean up. Sure needs a clean up. I need a clean up. I need to clean up my act. Natural gas at your service. That's kind of neat. Northland Utilities. Oh, stamp cards, Imperial Oil. There's listings March of 62 to December of 64. Some kids that got bored in the Chev and they were drawing pictures. So that's really cool to see. Atlas tires. Oh, I got new some Atlas tires on there. That's good. Cool. Atlas eight enders. Curling brooms. Wow. Oh, this is a neat curling guide. <laughs> Chevy Bel Air four door flat top. Wow. Well, I'm glad you could join me today. Uh, also. Well, if you want to see the parts car, I'll show it to you. Here's the parts car. I'm not going to go into huge detail with it. There's parts and pieces all over the place. You know, it's just an old shell of a... What happened, I guess, was some kids stripped it down, like, completely, and just kind of gave it to me without the hood, without the engine, without the grill. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, stuff. I mean, I actually sold some stuff to uh, John Wayne Shard's friend because he needed some stuff. I gave him some stuff. I can't remember. But uh, anyways, he needed some parts. I'm sure he got some stuff off his car. You know, there's whatever. It's all but bits and pieces of Chevrolet. And excuse the mess. But yeah, there's parts and pieces all over it right now. Well, that about sums it up for uh, Chevy Day today. Um, yeah, I'm just happy to keep these cars alive and maybe somebody could use them for parts or somebody could uh, restore one, an ambitious restore, that'd be great. Because we all know I'm not going to do it, not with these, no way. Um, but still, good to see them from the Crusher because that's kind of where they were headed. Anyways, we'll be seeing ya. Bye-bye. Stripped the fender off again, and now it's time to make the hoses. So, welcome to the new show, Crimpin' with Jim. Crimpin with yeah. Jim. It's all we do. <laughs> all crimpin' all it's day. It's crimpin' all, it's the crimpin' channel. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna crimp hoses. Yeah. Jim's a one-man crimping machine. Yeah. With when he when he has his with he has his one man. <laughs> yeah.
after the one man band didn't take off, <laughs> crimping was more lucrative. Yeah, the arthritis got to you, yeah. eh, with all the wearing the high hats on your yeah. knees all day. Okay. How's that That's going? Ready? Evenly spaced, yeah. Okay, I'm going to take over on the. Okay. All right. Now. Okay, we've got that tight. And are you happy? Uh, let's see here. I am now, yeah. Lock it in. Crimp it in, Mr. Scotty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get a slight hose extrusion. They grow by about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna have to compensate. <laughs> you want to shave a sixteenth? Look at oh, that. Yeah. It really puts the. That's just on. your Poisson's ratio of how the material is getting a lot smaller in one direction, so it just it has to go somewhere. Yeah. So. Uh, well, how appropriate for a French machine to have the Poisson ratio. <laughs> well, it's not just French things. That's right. Other things have the same problem. Oh, yeah. Is this us here? Um, no, we nope. saved that. We need that 45. Mm. Uh, well, it's right here. Okay. It's got the double indexing on it. So we need to remember the, yeah, the one cross. Yeah, the the double doubled one is the one we wanted. I'm going to idle it up to the line. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, another uh, arcane old tool from uh, days of yore, hey? Days of yore, yeah. There's slight riffling on the inner tube. It gives that bite. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's very. Uh, there's a lot more to it. And. Oh no. Did you wipe off the? No, I took the tape off to, to uncover the end, but of course the uh, the tape was what had the indexing okay. mark. Well, but, throw uh, it back at the car real quick. Yeah. See, we're right on the T here before the clamp, and you'll see it extrude. Oh. Get right in there. Ready. Here we go. Oh, you can see that U. Every pump. There. That's it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Right? Whatever now this good. one gets cut. Yeah. You want to give it a quick test? Yeah. It's such, within such nice, easy walking distance. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, hard wow. to find too much fault with that. That ever fantastic. Yeah, this is the low pressure cutout switch. Still happy with Cut, that. Cuts there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. gonna look, work really nice for yep. what we're doing here. And that still works with the air cleaner there. Oh yeah. Okay, good. It's actually even better when the air cleaner is there. There's more room. Join us next week on Crimp Channel. Uh, will it crimp? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. piece of work. Oh wow. Okay. Good. You want to just leave it there and go okay. on to the next one? Which would be this here guy to, to here. here. Oh I wonder if that 45 or oh no that other one was 90 that we had, right? So if we 90 off this guy, then we have That's 45 good. to play with. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Take this Call me crazy, but off. yeah. Oh here's all the hoses mocked in. And finished. Very nice. Did you see the seat, Dean? Look at that. Huh? Oh, this yeah. is the seat for the DS. The back seat. Stephen has finished retrimming. That had to be completely redone with all new foam and everything. What a nice, nice looking piece. And yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, the. Uh, it all matches the armrest now. There was a certain amount of reworking to get the shapes to match. And oh, yeah, uh, that just looks fantastic. Oh. Cannot wait oh. to see that in the car. Yeah, and the roof is And uh, good. Yeah, it's and the so roof is all finished. We sprayed that the other day. A nice what, like uh, an ivory white or something? Yeah, it's just kind of an off-white yeah. ivory. It's a it Citroen really color, but nicely done, boss. That yeah. looks great. Let's have the armrest. Look at that. Ooh, Folds like that. down. What a yeah, nice piece. Nice? 
There's even leather inside. Oh, yeah. Did you ever sell that smelly Lincoln for Which 400 one? bucks? The one in the ad, your Kijiji ad said it's smelly inside. Oh yeah, I sold it right away. Really? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, and then oh. I was like, nice. Did the guy have no nose or why? Who bought yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> but I got, yeah, I bought it. Like, so did you like triple your money out? Like double, I think I bought it for like 200 delivered and then I think I got 400 for it. Oh so yeah, yeah. double well, it's a ching. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that's right. There's another flip in the six bed. Flip in the bed. That's right, man. Not that's getting right. burned on any of these. You flip them too quick to <laughs> yeah, burn. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's no right. Time to fucking get burned, just, yeah. just as soon as they're coming off the trailer, picture sure and you just, yeah. <laughs> just, Well, yeah, you're so ruthless. Yeah. Right? Just Dean just like, posts cars with the previous owner's pictures right. from yeah. their yeah. app. Did you send somebody to pick up the car at the previous owner's fucking place? Or uh, is, that, is that the next level? Probably. Oh, that's the next level. Flipping them yeah. without yeah. ever picking them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>